Last week, we got a look ahead from the DFL party chair, Ken Martin. Earlier this morning, I spoke to GOP party chair, David Hand. Take a look. And joining us right now is GOP chair, David Hand. Thank you for coming on. Good to be with you. All right. I want to ask you about what's going on at the legislature. They obviously are in control of the legislature and the governor's office. And they are advancing a progressive agenda at record speed. It's really historic, uh, including bills that could be signed this week, driver's licenses for all, and also restoring felons after uh, restoring their voting rights. What, what's your comment? Well, I think it, uh, it's a little surprising that they are doing things that were not talked about appreciably during the election. Uh, in fact, many of the things that uh, Democrats running for office talked about, things like tax relief, uh, eliminating the Social Security tax, uh, uh, trying to enact some uh, things that would make Minnesota's business climate more uh, productive. None of those things are being done. In fact, they're being absolutely rejected. So I think the agenda that the uh, uh, what we're seeing from one party DFL rule in the legislature is uh, uh, surprising in some level, but I think also uh, one that the public is going to reject. So you think that there is going to be a reckoning in 2024. Let me ask you, how does the GOP do that without having the suburbs, which you seem to have lost, and also those all-important suburban winners? This is a map of the congressional districts, and you can see the blue is just highlighting the suburbs and the cities. You have the rest of the state. <laughs> Well, it's uh, uh, generally that that is true, but I think there are, especially in the legislative races, there are always uh, every every district is a little different. And as you probably know, in the last election, there were probably four or five, uh, six maybe uh, state house races that were very close, decided by a few hundred votes. Uh, the same with the state senate, there were at least three or four of those, uh, and these were all very hotly contested. I believe they will be again next year. And I think with the kind of agenda that the uh, DFL is enacting in the legislature, I think the public is going to be ready for some pretty significant change. And uh, Republicans are going to be campaigning on those things. But how do you do that without getting the votes of suburban women? You, you have not been winning with that group. Well, it's it's uh, like any other demographic. You have to campaign to to them, and you have to uh, talk to them. Uh, I think, in many respects, some of what we saw last year was uh, an agenda uh, aimed towards suburban voters that was about all about abortion. I don't believe uh, on that issue even that anybody expected that Minnesota would enact the most extreme abortion law maybe in the world. I, th I think we're on par with North Korea and China in terms of our abortion law. So I think even on that score, there's been tremendous overreach by Democrats. And I, I think for Republicans, uh, the goal is to point out to people uh, and ask them, are your interests being served? Is the uh, uh, economy getting better? Are, are the tax uh, uh, rates uh, uh, right? Uh, are energy policies right when you look at the skyrocketing costs of energy? So all of these things that are very practical issues are going to be important to suburban voters, and, and we're going to make that case. Um, Leading the statewide ballot in 2024 is, of course, Senator Amy Klobuchar, who is enormously popular. Do you have somebody who is set to run against her that you think has any chance of succeeding? Well, we uh, we are working, and uh, we do have a couple of people who have expressed interest, and I don't want to uh, make any premature announcements. But yes, we think we're going to have a competitive Senate race. Uh, we also think we're going to have a competitive race for Congressional District 2. Uh, these are both uh, contests that uh, I think are going to be uh, uh, prominent in the national uh, spectrum uh, of political activity next year. And, of course, there's a presidential race as well. And a lot, well, uh, a lot I want to ask you about a couple of things. It, congressional race uh, District 2 is, of course, Angie Craig, and she keeps winning. I mean, everybody says, oh, it's going to be so close, and she keeps pulling it out. But just quickly on the presidential race, a lot of talk, there's been a debate scheduled from Milwaukee for August. Does Donald Trump have Minnesota locked up or are you hearing a lot of interest about other candidates like Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, Mike Pence? Well, I don't think anybody on the Republican side has the nomination locked up. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of candidates and uh, we expect 
expect it to be a fairly uh, robust uh, 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 period. Uh, we are going to have a, a lot of interesting debate, but I, I would say no, Minnesota is not locked up by any means. There's a lot of interest, a lot of uh, people looking for who the next uh, candidate will be. All right, so people are challenging. You think the other candidates do stand a chance here in Minnesota? Well, we only have two that have publicly announced, uh, Nikki Haley and uh, Donald Trump. And uh, 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 there hasn't been, frankly, a lot of uh, uh, on the ground kind of political campaigning for the presidential contest at this point. I think a lot of people are waiting to see what's going to happen in the next few months. And we expect there will be several more candidates emerging. Well, thank you so much, uh, Republican Chair David Hand.